actually sweating completely. It's like I was exercising fully uh, all my body. Hello everyone, um, I'm very excited to make this video, finally, so let's get started. Um, well, I think the title of this video kind of says everything about whether hand and exercises are worth your time or not. So the discussion could be rather around how to play these exercises. Uh, because if you just follow the given direction uh, that Charles Hannon written in, the, in this score, without real understanding of how piano technique works, just mechanically lifting up your fingers, playing with great strength, you might end up not only not building up uh, finger muscles at all, but instead injuring your wrist. So, um, I mean, I'm just saying there's difference between playing this way Sorry for my action D, by the way, it's gonna stuck all the time, but I hope it's not gonna diminish the meaning of this video. Okay, um, so between this way and, for example, this way exercises to train your musical inner ear, correct on production, you will not only greatly strengthen your finger muscles, but will also avoid that unbearable boredom while practicing this, um, as it could seem from the first sight, non-musical music. So let me guide you step by step through all the amazing things you can actually do with Hannon exercises. By the way, there is also a book that you can download below uh, with selected exercises for uh, fourth, fifth fingers as well as uh, for your thumb. And all exercises you can practice using the method uh, I'm going to show you in this video. So there are kind of five benefits that I can list here. Um, essentially, there is no effort with sight reading this music, so you could easily uh, focus on more advanced tasks such as imagination, movement coordination, and intonation. So especially if you are not advanced pianist, it's very, very, very useful. Now, um, second one, because all exercises um, have kind of repeating pattern of movements with similar motions in both hands, it becomes very easy and efficient to study wrist and elbow movements. Uh, so similar patterns create uh, repetitive movements which also increase the speed of learning and memorizing movements. And speaking about repetitive patterns, uh, this is the best material you could probably find for starting imagining notes because as soon as you get um, as soon as you get it right in the first bar, yeah, you just shift everything one pitch higher in your imagination. That's basically it. I mean, it helps a lot uh, to practice this way. <coughs> okay, what was a three? Number four. Um, again, repetitive patterns will be really the best material to train musical speech. And especially uh, in these exercises where Helen would only use two three intervals in the pattern and they are mostly seconds and thirds so it's very very useful and the last um studying phrasing and training energy and weight distribution and passages is also relatively easier with simple music structure like these exercises have to sum up again, this is a perfect material for developing musical in your ear, correct on production, and of course the strength and agility of fingers. Uh, just FYI guys, I will put the links to study every principle I'm going to be using here in the description below. So if you have any questions, you can always find answers right there. I hope you understand, because if I'm going to explain every principle here, it's gonna take much more than let's say 20 minutes. 
So let's go. Uh, wrist and elbow movements. So this is the movements you would make with your wrist. Left, right, 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 right. Left, 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 left. Right, 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 right. Okay, now elbow movements. Um, there's a thing. Um, usually you would Okay, I'm not gonna talk about that, but it's, it's gonna talk a lot. I'm just gonna show you where you move. So, you gonna move on uh, here. Basically on the first note that goes in the uh, next direction. So, this. And as soon as we go down, so this is the first note to go, to go down, so we move elbow here. This is the first note to go up, we move here. inside with our imagination because as we all know if we just make movements it will still bring tension to the hands because we're unable to control the sensations that are invisible for us so the sensations that are in the muscles we can only control it with our imagination uh, the energy of imagination okay so some movement um, again what you could use you could use of course strings you could use some texture very easy my students find it quite easy even to use sound texture than uh, timbre of instruments and if you're not advanced if you're not an advanced finis um, what i could tell you what i would suggest is just when you go up imagine right hand and when you go down imagine left hand now there is a thing uh, the hand that you're not going to imagine while playing most probably will just act and imitate movements but wouldn't really you know, feel it naturally and still feel a bit stiff. So I would really, really encourage you to start developing polyphonic ear, uh, meaning imagine both hands together. And you can use it with this simple exercise. Let's say um, You take the first note, I'm imagining it to the left. So if you're going to imagine to the left, you're going to start playing in your head notes from top to the bottom. So this one to the left and this to the left. And then you speed up. The next one to the right. So you now from the bottom. making in your imagination not singing not playing next one Imagine uh, the whole bar without stopping. So basically, in your imagination, you would do this. And then go on with the next bar. So eventually, it's just uh, very beneficial if you really want to feel completely free with your hands. Then you should, of course, imagine both hands while playing. Uh, so the first step would basically look like this. I'm imagining notes and I'm playing it with correct wrist and elbow movement, keeping my hand absolutely empty and light, um, not making anything else. Yet. 
If you're hanging here for another two minutes, you understand why. So now we hop into international weight. Basically, your task would be all the same as you just did, but of course, uh, gathering weight and playing while internally sing with resistance and glissando in between notes. Yes, guys, even between seconds. Now it's very important here to know how to start because you might, uh, you know, gather weight and then if there is nothing in your head and you're trying to search for the sound, you might stop here while your hands are already on the keyboard. So this way is not gonna work. You need either to imagine the sound, I would say, if you're also not advanced, you would, uh, this is what you would do. You would imagine the sound first in your head, at least the first note. Then you gather weight, and while gathering weight, you again remind yourself, while bringing hands to the keyboard, you remind yourself again the sound that you need to produce on the instrument. Okay, so you imagine sound, good. Gather weight, bringing hands to the keyboard, I imagine sound again, and you start playing right away. So if I play now with intonation, weight, imagination, wrist, elbow movement, it looks this way. to the interesting part, dynamics and uh, voicing, I mean voicing if you're able to imagine both hands. Um, I would, uh, you will see it a little bit later, when you really practice the piece, not just studying, I would encourage you to practice it in, uh, in piano, legato staccata, in different tempos, and in forte, legato staccata, in different tempos. So that's why we need to train to imagine this uh, exercise in piano as well as in forte. So let's start with piano. I'm not diminishing the size of the sound, still keep the same size, increase transparency only. Otherwise, tiny sound will create tiny sensation in muscle which create tension. Okay, so when you imagine piano, you get a weight and play again. And I just want to add um, that practicing like in different dynamics and in different articulations will help you to build up finger muscles better because um, for playing piano, for example, I feel uh, more uh, muscle here. For example, when I play forte, I feel more muscle there. I mean, I know there is no muscles here, but I feel something here. So um, different dynamics, different articulations will train different parts of muscles. Anyways, so um, after we make our piano, Let's add voicing. Voicing is very, very important. I can't really grasp why it is important, but first of all, of course, it sounds better. Second of all, it feels more effortless to play this way. So again, when we're going to uh, voice, we're going to voice maybe just right hand. And uh, again, without uh, making the sound sharper, which would again create some sharp energy and uh, tension in muscles, we're just going to uh, Imagine it's closer to us. Use distance. Okay. Go 
to Huerta. So again, Huerta has to be measured with great resonance because if we measure Huerta like this, it will create the same sensation. <laughs> we'll lock up our muscles again. Um, so big, full, like in a huge cathedral with great resonance. And of course, we're using weight. And here, ta-da! Now you will see naturally, just because I'm imagining the huge sound, just because I'm expressing through weight and intonation, our fingers will start lifting up. and I don't feel any uncomfortable sensations, any aching, any stiffness in my hands because I use the weight of my body, yet it actually helps even better to train my muscle fingers, my finger muscles. <laughs> and again, we can use voicing. Just uh, imagine that you're standing closer. It's right hand right in front of you with the same forte resonance. starting to get stiff, pay attention better to your elbow movements. Maybe your elbow movements are not big enough and you kind of moving it quite stiff. So now let's go to articulations. Articulations, um, well, I just show you basically that was legato. Now let's play a soft staccato and loud staccato. Again. <laughs> Uh, that will help our finger muscles to work better. So, just want to show you how we're going to articulate. Second part, going to speed up. So, make sure you make good glissando and resistance in the first part and make extreme speed up in the second part because that part exactly will affect how sharp your um, finger muscle will work <laughs> how well it will work okay so let's do piano yourself at least in the beginning lift up your fingers So, um, well, 
what did I intonate basically? One third. There's one third. Uh, over here, there's one fourth. And then the rest is just seconds. So if I sing this musical speech, and I know the third has a certain meaning, and then seconds. So I would feel different. Um, again, you don't you don't really have to do musical speech, but I would really encourage you because it helps tremendously uh, with the second with the next stage of phrasing. Somehow, when you have this uh, understanding of intervals inside the phrasing, it's even more um, it's much easier to make uh, phrasing blocks. So if I play with musical speech, let's say let's come back to soft. Legato. And as you can see, I'm not playing in steady time uh, right now because, well, I'm not in the time stage yet. So um, let yourself. Um, you know, allow yourself to make some kind of robot uh, to ease the process of feeling musical speech in between notes through internal singing while playing. And phrasing. So, um, as you can see on the score, <laughs> on the screen, one 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 bar, so everything we're gonna uh, bring to the last interval. So if I sing the motif, it sounds this way. The first note kind of belongs to the previous motive, but I included it in the first motive anyways. Again, take your time, slow down towards the main interval, and take some break, and take a breath uh, before starting new interval, new, new motive. don't really know why we're doing phrasing. Phrasing creates the waves of energy um, when we basically inhale and exhale in our energy in our muscles and the, the last one <laughs> uh, will basically give us ability to play without tension, without accumulating tension because we're always gonna breathe while playing so we're not gonna like holding the tension <laughs> which will uh, bring to injur injuries on your hand and not what, like we're playing on complete exhalation all the time which where you're unable to move your fingers but it will always create so this is how it looks like when I play by motif certain pattern and limitation of the henna of this exercise um, I had to make like this so as you can see one phrase has two motive next phrase has two motive and next phrase has three motives so it's basically it and when you go down it's the same except in the uh, in the end there are two and two motives in phrase so if I sing Start playing faster, it's okay. 
uh, again, Stan is gonna have three phrases mostly, except the very last one, I'm gonna have two and two. And uh, last phrase, basically, gonna be more important. So, if I gonna sing... <laughs> three motif phrase, as you can see on the screen, is the most prominent. And then you can stop here, in the next sentence. before you start and feel it while you continue and it's always important not just feel those vertical pulses but always feel the phrasing horizontal phrasing that always go th goes through those vertical uh, pulses so um, basically you know let's let's say I'm gonna start with beautiful and smooth and calm time. Okay, then I start playing. stop this exercise to give you an idea of how you would practice every exercise so before how you study you know like collecting all the layers till you get the full art in your hands now how to actually practice this exercise practicing it in different tempos in piano with legato in staccato in forte with legato in staccato will build strength in different parts of muscles and practicing in different keys will also help to um, upload to your imagination the sounds of black keys, which is uh, very good for training musical inner ear. And of course, there are a little bit different distance between those notes, so you will again develop a little bit more, even smaller parts of the finger muscles. So basically, you would play one. tension and basically I'm repeating myself but it's important when you feel unhealthy tension in hands like um, there's no breathing anymore uh, focus better on phrasing waves and on uh, on better elbow movement so I guess you understand what I mean right so phrasing waves meaning drop more energy in the beginning of block now bring more to the more permanent section that will all let your muscles start breathing again and again elbow movement sometimes in fast tempo especially when we're distracted with all more advanced tasks we can forget and elbows will feel a little bit locked up and that will bring tension to the wrist so always remind yourself to move your elbows now after practicing this way that i'm going to show you 10 minutes uh, for 10 minutes, maybe for a couple of days, you will already feel better pleasant sensations in your fingers. Um, it's just it's just worth it just to, to, to experience the sensation as fingers, so just go ahead. Um, so let's go ahead. Now, um, piano, legato, 
and I'm gonna go through three times of three types of time. but not for you. <laughs> now I'm going a little bit faster. has gone um, so it's probably very dark but okay <laughs> staccato but maybe you can't see what I feel it <laughs> um, now let's go to forte forte uh, okay let me breathe <laughs> it's like I just ran some kilometers um, forte legato again three types of time
you do it correctly. Um, um, okay, now fuerte, staccato, in three different tempos. <laughs> uh, let's go slow. Okay, so that's about it. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.